Hey guys, it's Hannah, this is Bookworm's Talk, and today I'm going to talk about Fuck Love by Taryn Fisher. So if you are new to my channel, what I do is an unspoiler section in the beginning where I give a brief summary, synopsis, my feelings about the book, and then I will warn you before I jump into the spoilers where I start talking about like the nitty gritty and the details of the book. I would say if you're a fan of The Opportunist, you would really enjoy this. But into the summary now. So our protagonist, Helena, is a victim of bad timing. There is so much about life that is about timing, and this poor girl has like none of that. None of the good luck. Out of nowhere, she has this dream, and it's one of those moments for her that changes the course of her life. It makes her aware of different things, and it makes her realize the inevitable, but also what she really wants. And in this dream, there is her best friend's boyfriend, Kit, and it makes her see him very differently. But she still wants to be loyal to her friend Della, and she's just in this really weird situation. And her attraction to him is not unprovoked, he's also very interested in her. But of course, like the bad timing thing that I was mentioning, he's with her best friend and she's not going to do anything to like ruin that, you know? And the same goes for him. Helena is a very selfless person. I typically hate selfless kind of characters because I feel like they can be very flat. Yes, she does like take care of her friend Della who is kind of a prima donna. She's very selfish, very opposite. But Helena has been friends with her for so long and friends with her family and she's kind of taking care of Della always. There's this really obvious camaraderie that she has to her and this loyalty and she doesn't want to ruin it. And so she does do things throughout the story that are going to be better for her because she's in this situation and this dream was so vivid and it's this life that she feels like she had this vision of that this is where she will end up and that she will end up with Kit and there will be all these other things in her life and like a coloring book artist I believe if I'm correct and then she starts doing things to fulfill parts of this life that she's seen and this dream just becomes not necessarily a goal set for her but I think in her mind it's more of a this is where my end game is going to be and I can either deviate from that or continue in this situation and she makes choices by it if that makes any sense. And there is a theme of fate woven throughout this book. It's really woven in with this dream, this end destination, I'll call it. And it's sort of this choice, I think, for the reader to decide whether or not this dream is the reality or the future reality, or if it's just a dream. And the choices that she's going to make could get her there, they're never going to happen, and it was just a dream, or she's bound to get there because that's fate. Like, your choices don't necessarily um, create your end-all, be-all fate. So it's sort of this choice between a couple different things, not just the straight-up, do you believe in fate, do you not, do you think you can make your own choices, or do you think it's predestined? Like, there are a lot of different options within that, and I find that really interesting. That's something that I enjoy exploring in my own writing. I'm a very big fan of this exploration of fate and kind of the belief of it within the characters and what that says about them and if they believe uh, or if their beliefs change stuff like that so I find that extremely extremely interesting and I love that in books and it's been in I know for sure Mudvayne it was in Mudvayne which I'm now rereading because I love this book so much Mudvayne is my favorite hands down of Terrence not everyone will be a fan of that book but if you are it hits you in like this special way and I love it for that. But back to fuck love. There were a couple things I didn't uh, love as much and I think it was just the dialogue, but I also think that was like the age bracket that uh, Helena was in. And so there were a couple small things like that that I didn't love as much. They didn't really bother me. I kind of soon figured out that Helena is kind of like a quirky weird character and that was part of her quirkiness. So then I very quickly accepted that, but that was my only thing. <laughs> Overall, highly recommend this book. If you're a fan of Taryn's writing, I mean, you have to get it. You have to. I actually, uh, I had it on Kindle, as you've seen, but I've now ordered it for a uh, hard copy because I'm going, <gasps> I'm so excited about this. Okay, so next week I am going to the Bookworm Box store book signing thing. I don't know all these hand motions and I get to meet her. And the last time I met Taryn was before I even read her books. So I'm very excited about that. And I ordered a book so that I could be signed there. Uh, that was my story. <laughs> so I think that is about it for the non-spoilers. Sorry if I jabbered on for a little while, but I feel like that was actually a pretty useful non-spoiler section considering I haven't reviewed a book in like, you know, two months. <laughs> so now I'm going to get into the nitty gritty and 
I'm just, I'm very excited to talk about this book. Please comment below, like, uh, if you have thoughts throughout watching the review, because I want to talk to you guys about this. I think it's the funnest thing ever, especially with my fellow PLNs. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Come back when you have read it to watch the spoiler section, then come down there and discuss with us. So I'll see you later. Bye. This is Blue. He's hanging out with us for a moment. He's gotten so big. When did you guys see him last? He's been talking. There was this one part that Devin Swa was mentioned, and I got blue bumping the things really, really. But there was this one part where Devin Swa was mentioned, and I loved Final Destination. I don't know what other movies he's been in. I don't think I've seen him in anything else. But for Final Destination, I was like, I don't. I'm just gonna throw a number out there, like 13 or so when I saw the movie. And oh, this girl had the hots for Devin Swa. And now I've watched the movies, movies, and I just, <laughs> I don't understand. But I mean, when I was that young, I thought Nick Carter was. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I was annoyed by Kit a lot in this. Not to say that I didn't like him as a character, and I actually kind of liked that I was annoyed with him at a few points, because when you see everything from the perspective of the one who is interested in, you can sometimes tend to view them as this perfect character. You make my life very difficult. <laughs> You're funny. He likes it, I swear, he's purring, he's just flailing. Oh god, that dream. I reread that dream uh, after I read the book, actually, and I just, oh, I love it. I personally, I guess I'll give you my opinion on it or my belief of it. I do believe in fate, but I also, I have a complicated belief in fate, and I've explained it maybe once or twice in a video before, but I believe that there are different fates. This is gonna be so confusing. And that your choices in life can kind of deviate you from this one that is like your ultimate and all good fate, you know? And it can be bent and twisted where you can end up at this alternative point. And I really think that you only have two. Or if you do have one, you will end up with deterrence and like side paths that you think are shortcuts, whatever. And it takes a longer time to get there. And maybe sometimes you die before you do get there or you get so stuck in something else that you can't actually get to that point. So that's sort of my belief system. But I believe in the dream but I don't believe in the dream in the exact same way that it happened because I think that the kid was Neil's, like her kid, I forget his name, but her son in the dream, obviously she doesn't have a son with Neil. And so that kind of gives it this duality of like two different fates. So that's like kind of supporting my belief, but that's like not a common thing. So that's probably just all in my head, but I do believe in the dream as something that was some kind of vision or a sign, perhaps. I believe in shit like that. I don't know, the universe works in weird ways. And so I like to see that in books because, I don't know, that actually felt real to me, you know? Like it felt like something that could happen. Della felt a bit like Leah to me from The Opportunist. If you haven't read that, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil you, but she felt very reminiscent of that for me, especially in the beginning. Um, as we got to know her more, I felt like she had a different kind of depth because I do believe that Leah has depth. Um, I actually don't hate her. I think I kind of hated that she was an obstacle. Not that she was an obstacle, I hated the obstacle, which was her. I didn't hate Della in that way, and I don't know if it was because I kind of had that whole experience with Leah or not, but um, I never hated her at all. And maybe it was the situation that uh, Della and Kit were together that made me not, but I also didn't hate uh, Helena for it. One thing that I wasn't the biggest fan of was like the multiple pregnancy things, or almost pregnancy things I think one time but then it was later explained towards the end of the book the kind of family that she came from she came from a very Italian family and she wanted a lot of kids and then it was kind of later explained that she was trying to get pregnant to trap him but it didn't it wasn't phrased like that but that's what it meant and again I didn't really hate her for that because if you look at things from the I don't want to call her the villain, but for the sake of this uh, explanation, like the quote unquote villain, then you see that what she is doing is not because she's just a mean person or whatever. Like this is what she wants and she's willing to do anything to keep what she wants slash get what she wants. And I don't think that's some grand dishonorable thing. Maybe a little selfish, but also kind of self-preserving. Because as humans, guess what? We're really selfish creatures. We're concerned about our own well-being and our wants, and that's not a bad thing. I think people overuse the word selfish in such a negative connotation, and really it's just 
looking out for yourself and I don't think that's a bad thing. And speaking of villain, I kind of want to look at Helena as this villain, quote unquote villain. Because if you were to look at this without having read the story, she's interested in her best friend's boyfriend. She, and her best friend is very interested in this guy. She thinks he's kind of the one. So then someone who, I hate, use, I hate using the word stealing because people are not objects to steal, but to steal um, the boyfriends, that would be looked at as this villainous role. And then I kind of find that interesting with, what was his name, Neil, which was uh, Helena's boyfriend. He ended up cheating on her with, I don't remember the chick's name, Sadie, I think. And that was like this, uh, he's a douchebag, look at him, look at this um, villain. But it's kind of what was close to happening with her. I think it was really interesting and really cool how uh, Taryn challenged us, the audience, to see it from this protagonist's perspective that could be viewed as an antagonist in a lot of different ways and it's even kind of mirrored in this, the own story and then like have us understand her and root for her in that way not to say that it was justifying what Neil did or cheating in general but it was just a new perspective it was a new way of looking at things whether that was her intention or not I found that to be kind of too coincidental to be a coincidence also just a quick mention um I didn't feel like Helena had any poor me, poor me things, but she was also rightly sad about things that have happened. It was just really well balanced. I felt like Helena was a very solid character. So when Della called and told Kit that she was pregnant and he went back to her, which it's the honorable thing to do, but because that wasn't what he wanted, it's almost like he was setting himself up for like a life that didn't really belong to him. And that felt cowardly. And I'm really glad that that was addressed in the book uh, from himself even I think too he realized it which I thought was very I don't know I felt like it was necessary because he felt like a very self-aware character and to mention Greer I felt like she was this little well of knowledge she had so many really good lines and I'm actually gonna read you a few we think we can control our lives but our lives control us and everything that touches our lives controls us people have less power than they think they do it's just the reactions we control, which I think is again kind of a tie back into fate. The whole um, scene where they were eating spaghetti and she was, he was trying to talk to her about everything and then he passed her the note that she wrote at the bar way back when. She wrote, I had a dream, don't marry Della. And oh, he kept it all this time, which it toyed with me. It toyed with me so much, this whole book, and I still don't really know. And I kind of like that I don't know though whether he had the same dream because there were so many places that it was like not even just hinted it was almost blatantly verbatim the dream but it felt like he had to know he had to know but i don't know whether he had the same dream or not or a different variation of a dream and for the longest time in the book i thought he definitely had it especially when greer talked about the lion dream that he had for a while and how he was like trying to beat that and then i thought maybe because he's had experiences like that where it's like it's just a dream it's just a dream that that's why he chose not to believe in it so much i don't know i no i changed my mind i think he did i think he, <laughs> i think he had maybe not the dream maybe a variation of the dream yep that's my belief. <laughs> and speaking of dreams, I'm gonna try to find the part where Muslim came in. I don't really know Muslim's point. Muslim was part of this cult group. I, this is weird, am very in, not into cults, but like into documentaries about cults and stuff like that. I find it so intriguing, like how you're able to convince all these people, but I really don't think it's that big of a feat, but I still find it so intriguing. There's this movie on Netflix called The Veil. It's more of like a paranormal cult thing but it's super interesting it parallels the whole oh it happened in california i can't remember the name charles manson was involved in it really interesting highly recommend to watch that movie if you find the kind of thing interesting and she goes with him and they have i don't even know what to call it um they sleep together she has this dream again it kind of goes back to my weird ass believe in multiple fates which almost completely uh disregards the idea of fate i understand that i don't know i felt like he was interesting and maybe i'm just not comprehending his role in the story as much as there is to it i think i might actually reread the parts that he's in to further grasp that i wish i did that before i reviewed this sorry but um check the description if i have a new opinion on muslim and there are a couple really good lines right around this section so i'm going to read a couple of them for you life is a carousel of four seasons I like the carousel thing. It reminds me of mud pain. Unpredictable for the most part. Happy, unhappy, content, searching. Mess up the order and they still rebound at one point or another. I've learned that revolution can be inward or outward. A move across the country to gain perspective, 
a change of heart and mind to gain sanity, but the point is to revolt when the seasons change. Like cold air in your lungs after too much warm air. Maybe this is how you feel when you find your place in the world. And I have two more and then I'm done with reading little bits from it, but I couldn't help myself. Don't be upset that you can't attain constant happiness. It's the quickest way to feel like a failure in life. If each of our lives represented a page in a book, happiness would be the punctuation. It breaks up the parts that are too big. It closes off some things, divides others. But it's brief, showing up when it's needed and filling tired paragraphs with breaks. Being content is a more attainable constant state. To love your fate without being drunk on euphoria. Brave, determined acceptance removed from bitterness. Be gentle with yourself. Embrace the lows so that you can more effectively enjoy the highs. Love the fight. Love it so much. Let it save you when your emotional muscles have become soft. I feel like I haven't given Della the amount of attention that I really wanted to give her in this book. <laughs> Blue one's up. But I felt like she did have depth as a character. I don't feel like she was like a silhouette or anything like that. But when she woke up, I liked her the most then, even though a lot of people may not have liked her the most then because she was more of an obstacle at that point. I think I was more willing to look past it. She had this struggle with finding herself, finding her place in the life that she now had, uh, dealing with the realization that she is not going to be able to have any more children. And it's almost like she's dealing with this new place that her life is going to be. I'm sorry, I'm so scrambly, but before I actually get into his book, I wanted to go back to the dream and how um, Annie was blue, stop it. But Annie was kind of like filling the spot, I guess, of what her, or Helena and Neil's child, uh, anyway, what he was in that. And so, blue! And it's kind of like how she was gonna do the coloring book thing, but then like her artistic everything didn't really work out. But then he had like a different variation of a book. I don't know, I feel like there's enough that it, my theory is making more sense as I think about it more. Aw, uh, and how he would let her read the book. <laughs> and I thought it was really cool how it was kind of his book that, brought them back together because if it weren't for her like throwing the pages and one of the pages ending up by him that he would have turned on his phone and found where to meet her and I don't know so it was kind of like his book brought them back together but man after she came back and uh I think she ended up getting really really sick and he came to visit her she told him about her dream and then she said something that Muslim kind of said to her so I guess that's a big role of him being in the book. He said something like you shouldn't have to convince someone to love you back. You just shouldn't. That's not how it should work. And then June comes in after he leaves and she was like you slept for so long the wedding should have been yesterday but he called it off. He called it off because of you. And it ends in um ra ta, -ta which is how Mero ended. Not any big spoiler but I see the tie in there. Um, I'm really interested to hear more about Muslim actually. Uh, I find him a very intriguing charismatic character. I'm very interested. So I think I hit on all the points that I was really wanting to hit on in this. I hope I didn't forget anything. In the description will be all of my social medias. You can follow me around on there. I'm very very active on Instagram so I mean this book has Instagram a lot in it so. But I want to talk to you guys about it. Like what are some of your own theories? Do you believe that the dream was real? Do you believe that he had a dream? Do you think, I don't know, I, I just, I wanna hear what you guys think. I, I really loved that aspect the most of this book. I feel like if it didn't have that, I wouldn't have this odd love for it, but I felt like there was something just so magical about that and it carried out throughout the rest of the story. And I feel like magic was something that was also in this book. There were so many Harry Potter references that I just didn't get because I never watched the movies or read the books because I had weird parents and I wasn't allowed to and then I felt like I was just too late for the train. So there was a lot of stuff like that that I missed but I feel like magic was also a very big part that was tied in throughout this just as big as fate if not more. If you're curious uh, to see my thoughts on some of Taryn's other books that I've reviewed I have some that are very old that I'm slightly humiliated by because I was a ball of energy back then. Uh, but I will have all of those links down there in the description. I'm actually thinking about revisiting those and since I'm rereading Mudvayne I'm thinking about doing some kind of, not a review like a second time, but I don't know, like Mudvayne Revisited or fast. Actually, it's not that bad of a title. I might call it that Mudvayne Revisited. I want to make that some kind of like live chat thing where people who have read it can really chime in, but I, I just don't know. I've never done any live thing on YouTube and I'm terrified of it. I might do that. If that's something that interests you, please let me know down there in the comments and I will see you guys later next time. Bye. This is a 
happy ending from Karen Fisher. What? Uh, you wanted up. You told me. I also really like Trigger. Uh, oh, okay. Helena. 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 What? Oh my god, there's so many ways that I just now realized to say that name. I thought you would want back up. I, I told you. I told you. Blue, are you eating my Christmas tree? I hear you gnawing on it. Stop it. Layla Cadarso asked, what do you write about? I like to write about things that are difficult and things that people don't think about. And I like to challenge the reader to think about things in a different way. I do have like a, a thing of romance within at least the book that I'm working on right actually all of my books that I've ever worked on always have a little bit of romance in it before I even started reading romance. 